Hello Lara friends, Laravel just released its new starter kit. Say goodbye to Chatstream and Breeze, they served us really well, but it's time to move on. Now picking a starter kit is gonna be super straightforward, like really simple. You're into Livewire? Boom, grab the Livewire starter kit. More of a view person on the front end? We've got you covered with the view starter kit. And hey, if React is your jam, which let's be honest, for many of us it is, there's a React starter kit waiting for you. That's literally all there is to it. No confusion anymore and no more fuss. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the React Starter Kit. And trust me, if you're looking to mix your favorite PHP backend with React's awesome frontend capabilities, this is exactly what you've been waiting for. If you'd like to know more about our Starter Kits in general, you can go to our brand new level website. By the way, wow, this looks really beautiful. And check out open source. And here on the left, we have the Starter Kits and just click one of them. And here is our new landing page just for our starter kits. That's how important they are to us. If you like a five minute introduction, you can check out this video by my friend and colleague Josh about all the starter kits. And yeah, you will find some information about all of them. Also, we have some nice live previews for all of them, which you can check out, but I'm not going to spoil you here. I want to give you the real first reaction in this video. And yeah, here's also all what those starter kits can do. So you can check this out for yourself on this new landing page. But we're going to jump right into installing our React starter kit. And here we are on the React starter kit repository. And this is the first option on how to install the React starter kit by just grabbing the code here and clone it um, to your machine. And yeah, this is possible because this now is a whole application. This is not a package anymore, and you can just use this and start your app development from this state here. Here's the cool thing about those new starter kits. They are not just packages that you add to your project. Instead, they're complete ready-to-go applications that you can start building on right away. The best part, all the code is yours from day one, meaning you have complete freedom to customize every aspect of it to your projects or personal needs. Of course, if you're using Laravel already for some time, you also know about the Laravel installer, which is just amazing. And that's also what we are going to use to create our first project with the React Starter Kit. All right, here we go, Laravel new. If you have already Laravel installer installed, you can just do this here and let's call this React Starter Kit. And here you can also check already which uh, our starter kits you want to use. Um, of course, you don't have to use one. You can just create a new level 12 application as well. But we are here to check out the new React starter kit. Also very interesting, we have level built-in authentication, as you already know it, but we also support work OS now. But we're going to deal with this later or in a separate video. And then we're using PEST here as our testing framework flavor. And yeah, here we go. Let's install this new project. This will take a couple of seconds. All right, let's run npm install. And we are good to go. Let's open up this project in PHPStorm. And here we are. Before we check out the code itself, let's just give this a try and run this with our development script here, which is going to run a few processes here at the same time. We see our server is running, Veed is running. We have our queue output and logs output as well. Okay, let's check out the new starter kit here in the browser. And voila, here we have it, our brand new welcome screen. So this is the level 12 welcome screen. By the way, take a look at this animation. Uh, doesn't this look really nice here? Yeah, I love it. Great work by our team. So you will also see this welcome screen with every level 12 application. But as you can see, we also have some links here for login and register. So authentication is something that already comes with every starter kit of us, but also with the React one. So um, we can log in, but we don't have an account yet. So let's just create one. Um, just create one for me. Christoph at level.com. My super secret password. And here we go. We are uh, using SQLite in the background by default, which is super easy for just getting started here locally. And this is it. This is the dashboard of all of our starter kits. Um, as I mentioned already, all of our starter kit have the same features and we try to make them to look as similar as possible. So yeah, that you can also switch from one to the other. If you prefer to use a different stack, this will look pretty much the same. By the way, we're using here on the React starter kit, ShedCN components, which is a component library or component um, provider 
that lets you use a lot of nice components for React. And we've been using this a lot here for the starter kit. And this looks really nice. And similar to all of the starter kits that we had before with Chatstream and Breeze, this is the dashboard. We have some navigation here, which we have here on the left in the sidebar. We have a logo with an icon. We have the name of the project. We have some links here. This is also interesting here. We have one to get to um, the React starter kit, the repository, and also one to get directly to the documentation of all of our starter kits, which I highly recommend you to check out. Then of course, here we have our um, navigation for our account. And yeah, here we have some nice settings. We can update our profile here. We can delete the account if we want to. We can change the password. We can change the appearance if you prefer dark, which I usually do. Hmm, should we use this? Yeah, maybe the next video. Um, let's keep system settings here. Yeah, so we have this in all of our starter kits as well. And I think it's now time to check out the code as well. And here we are in our main route file in the level application with, which sits under routes web. And here you can see the routes that we have defined. And this is also the one which we have seen before, the welcome screen, which is being rendered by Inertia.js. Inertia.js is our adapter between Laravel and your front-end framework of choice. It lets you create single-page applications that we love without the hassle of building an API while using server-side routing. It's the best way to combine all the amazing backend features of Laravel with you or React. And the component that's being rendered here, the welcome one, let's take a look at this. This is now a React component which sits under resources JS components or pages. So we have for what you typically know as Blade files in Laravel, these are now on the React side um, components here, like the welcome screen, the dashboard, all of our out pages, and so on. And all the components which we're using are coming from our components here, and the UI ones are the ones which we're using from ShadCN. And yeah, you can check them out and use them wherever you want to in your application. Also very interesting, let's go down here to layers. So we have different layers which we're using. One is for the authentication pages like login and sign up, password, forget, and things like that. And then we have our app layout for our dashboard when we are logged in. And this is interesting to us because there are a few things that we can tweak here. Let's start with our auth layout. So back here in the browser, let's log out and let's go to the login page here. So this is what it currently looks, but we can change this. Before with chat stream and breeze, we gave you like one layout which you had to use. You could customize it, but it was a little bit difficult since those were packages. But now it's a little bit easier and we also provide you a few variations to use. So we're currently using this simple out layout, but we can also change this to, um, let's start with the card layout. And now you can see we have this kind of card here around, which looks very similar to what we had with Breeze before in our old starter kit. So this also looks very nice. Let's try another one. So what else do we have? We also have this split layout here. This is also something that you see currently a lot. So you have a lot of space here on the left to show some beautiful images, talk about your product, your application, and on the right you have this. And of course, this is the same for the sign up page as well. So that's about the authentication layout, but we also have something that you can do with the application layout. For this, I need to log in again. Let's see if I still know my password. Uh, yes, seems so. Okay, so this is what it currently looks like. We have the sidebar here on the left. We have the dashboard in the middle. We can close this, then we have those icons here on the left. So this looks also great for now. But yeah, you can change this to your needs. So for this, we're going now to the application layout. And first here we can also change. We're currently using the app sidebar layout, but we also support the app header layout. Let's take a look at this now. You can see this is changing here on the fly. And now we have this kind of header here with our icon, with the logo, with the name of the project, with our links here. Everything here is now on top as well as our user menu. So if you prefer this, you can use this as well. But let's go back to the other one here. Um, to the sidebar one because there are some variations that we can have here as well. So we can also change, let's go now into components, into the app sidebar. So here are also a few things that we can adapt. First, all the links that we've seen before, like going back to the dashboard or to the re repository in the documentation, those links are defined here and you can change them and add a few if you want to. So here we have our sidebar and here we have two properties which we can change. We have collapsible, 
and we have variant. Let's start with the first one. Currently we have icon. So this means if we close this, we see here those little sidebar with icons. But we can also change this to, what do we have? Off canvas. So you can see now the sidebar is completely gone if we close it. Let's bring it back. If you prefer this, you can use that. And we also have, what's the other one? It's called none. And then we have no sidebar, which is floating or that you can close. It just sits here on the side and it stays here forever and the dashboard is on the right. Okay, let's go back here to icon, which I prefer. And now we have the variant. So currently you can see the dashboard. Um, you maybe need to zoom in a bit. We have those rounded corners here and the dashboard kind of sits on top of a layer from the sidebar. And this is something that we can change. So let's change it from inset to um, start with floating here. So now you can see it looks like the sidebar is now floating on top of the dashboard layer. And I really love how those little changes end up here in the layout and give this extra touch and look how beautiful this looks here. So this is the floating option. And we also got another one which was called sidebar. Here we go. And now the sidebar sits here on the left and there is a line here going from the top to the bottom here that separates the sidebar from the dashboard. We can still close it and have those icons here. But yeah, this is something that you can use as well. I'm going to change this back here to floating. I think this looks really nice. And of course, these are just some customizations that we provide here out of the box with our starter kits. But yeah, this code belongs to you. You can do anything with it now that you have it in your repository. All right, let's go back to the browser and let's take a look at some of the features that also comes right away with this. And with basically all of our starter kits. So first, if you forgot your password, you can just request this, kristaladlerval.com. But before I do this, I need to set up Herd, which is also an application by Laravel, Laravel Herd that lets you set up a local environment for PHP and everything Laravel related very easily. And one of the things that also supports is having a local mail here where you can see all of your mails. So let me just copy those settings here and let's bring them into my environment file down here. And let's go down here to my mail settings. And I think these are the ones that I'm going to change here. All right. And back here, let's send now a request to reset my password. Let's see if this worked. And voila, here we have already the email. You're receiving this because we received the password reset request. Let's reset the password and let's just change this. And that's it, we have reset the password and we can now log in again if you want to. Another thing that I want to show you is currently if we sign up, we are immediately logged in and we are on our dashboard. But often you don't want to do this, you want to make sure that the user verifies their email first. So this is something that's also very easily done in every level application, but also in our starter kits. I'm going here to my user model here and already on the top, I have this interface, which I can use now which is called must verify email, which already comes with Laravel. And then the only thing else we need to do inside our web route file next to the auth middleware, which we are having around our dashboard. Um, I also have to add now the verified one. Okay, let's give this a try. Let's sign in Tater. Here we go. And you can see now we are here on this page saying that we need to verify our email first. Let's switch to Herd, and here we already have the email. You can see this is now for Taylor. Let's verify the email address. And here we go, now we are locked in, but we've made sure that the user has verified their email first. All right, so far so good. So there are two more things that I want to show you. First, I already told you that we're using Shetzi and components here. So let's try to add a new one. So here we are on the Shetzi and UI components. A website landing page here where you can see all the different stuff that they support and it is a lot I can tell you so you also have some nice previews here for everything that you can use and how to use it and what we're going to we're going to search for the switch one here this one is just a very little one this one here but let's say we want to add this to our application let's take a look here first we want to add it through chat CM all right let's Copy this code in here. Yes, we want to proxy here. 
And what has happened now, you can see that this component was now automatically added to our resources JS components UI. So where all of our other components already are here. And here we have now, let me check again, I here UI. Here we have now this new component. And let's try to give this a try on our dashboard page here. You can see we have here these different placeholders. These are these here. So let's get rid, rid of one of them. And let's also do some padding here. By the way, we're using Tailwind 4, which is brand new here already with all of our starter kits. So we're very happy that this already worked out. And now we're going to add our new switch component here, which is this from one from components UI switch. Switching. And here we are, we already have this component and that's how easy it is to just add a new chat CN component that you would like to use in your new level starter kit. And of course you would style this to look a little bit better than what I just did here. So let's create here very fast a new component. Let's call this email notification dot tsx. Here we go. I have already prepared the code. All right, for this one, we also need to add the chat CN form component. Let's run this. And you can also see if you try to add a new component and you already have some components that already exist, you will be asked if you want to override this. In my case, no, I don't want to do this. And here we go. Let's try to use this now instead of our not so beautiful switch. Let's use email notifications. And voila, this is also how this could look like if you want to make this look a little bit more beautiful. But yeah, this is now all up to you. Use whatever components you like, create your own ones, um, import the ones from ShedCN or from other um, libraries. This is now all up to you. And also the last thing here that I want to mention is as I told you, we are using Tailwind CSS and we are using the version four where there is no JS configuration file by default. So everything that you need to know here is under your app.css file or inside your app.css file. And you can see now we have now these new imports. If you want to use a plugin, this is how you would do this. And also very interesting because we already heard this question a lot. How do I change my font? This is where you would do it. Just input it from Google Fonts or from wherever you want to use it and then just update it here and this will be used through the CSS variable. And that's how easy this is. And yeah, one last time I'm going to say it, this now all belongs to you, customize it to your need, have fun, be creative, and yeah, create some beautiful things with our new starter kits. And there you have it. Lava's new starter kits are a game changer in how we kickstart our next project. It was never easier, just pick the front end flavor you love and you're ready to roll. Make sure to check out the other starter kit videos as well if you prefer to work with you or with Livewire. Have fun creating your next project and don't forget to ship it as well. Bye.